Hi, I'm Jeff Fong for Dr. Wealth. Today I'm going to talk about should you buy old or new properties for investment? Disclaimer, opinions about property investing will be expressed in this video. They should not be taken as recommendations or investment advice. The views belong to the presenter, which is me, and do not represent the views of Dr. Wealth. Are new built properties worth the premium? Now, when you drive past a property developer site and are attracted by the beautiful show gallery that's perched proudly at the end of the driveway, before you know it, you have driven into the driveway and are greeted by real estate agents all dressed smartly in sharp suits. They usher you in with a lovely cup of latte, just what you need. And before you know it, you're being led around the show unit. You can't help but be impressed by the luxurious fittings and impossibly chic interior design. Then you take a look at the price list and nearly fall off your chair. The agent tells you that the premium price is justified because of the great location, high spec fittings. And a bank is even willing to land based on the listed price. Well, is it fair valuation? And should you buy it? First, the definitions. What are new properties? A new property or new built is a property that is brand new and has never been lived in before. Quite often, the buyer purchases it off plan. Off plan, it means you buy a property based on the architect's drawing and a floor plan. Direct from developers. In Singapore, the biggest developers are Far East, Capital Land, City Development. In UK, they are Barrett, Bellway, Taylor Wimpy and Barclay. Next, we look at the new builds, pros and cons. Pros, warranties. The developers will usually offer structural warranties to protect you from any structural defects. In the UK, new builds come with structural warranties of 10 years. New fittings, well, they come with new fittings, energy efficient appliances, open plan living, personalization, you might have the opportunity to pick your own finishing, which is great for those who like to customize. Cons, they are often more expensive. Well, could be a lot more expensive. New builds are more expensive than resale properties, all things remaining equal. You are paying for the developer's profits and the cost of land. Oftentimes, in the same location, a new build could be 15 to up to 50% more expensive than a surrounding existing property. Moving in problems, when you move in, there may be issues with utilities, infrastructure, postal services when you first move in. Size of units. New builds tend to be tinier than the resale counterparts. It is not a coincidence. Well, the more apartments a developer can squeeze out of the project, the more profits he gets. Now back to pros, no upward chain. No, there is no need to wait for the seller to find a new property to buy and move in before you can purchase. Now this applies only to UK where a chain may exist. As in, when you buy a property, the seller has an upward chain and needs to buy another property before he can sell you and he fails to buy, then the property transaction is off. And in many cases in UK, the chain can be up to 10 purchases, 10 transactions, and any one in the chain fails, the whole transaction is called off. Sweeteners, some developers may be willing to throw in freebies like better quality appliances and carpets. Could be about 20 to 50,000 more, more worth of it. Now, potentially lower utility bills. Newer properties may be made with materials and incorporate technologies. They are more energy efficient. Cons. Now you have to be careful. Many buyers have reported being shocked at the quality of units when they first walked in. The units look nothing like when they were promised in the brochures. Defects. Some developers do not have great after-sales service and may take a long time to fix the defects, even not at all. Delays, the developer could take a long time to complete the properties and that 
could mess up your financial plans. For example, if it's supposed to be completed within two years, it could take five. And in the meantime, you could be renting out for an extra three years. Let's look at the case study of new built versus old in Melbourne, Australia. As you know, in Australia, a non-Australian citizen has to uh, buy new built. Now, the case of a new built, the Ascent 101 St. Kilda Road, Victoria 3182, which is a new built, bought in St. Kilda in 2014 for $630,000, two beds, two baths, one car park. Today, it's valued at $515,000 to $590,000. If you take the midpoint, it's roughly about $550,000 based on the sole transaction for the same size unit in the same project which means that you have lost about 10% after 7 years. Now, next to it is a not-so-glossy, old, built-in-1976 apartment block that's low density, very few units, 31 Burnett Street, same postcode. Two bed apartments of similar size could be bought in 2014 at only $512,000. A similar unit was recently sold in December 2020 for $520,500. It's only a small increase, but you never lost money. So now you can see, you actually paid roughly about 20% premium when you bought the Ascent. And after, ten, after 7 years, it is still a loss of 10%. Now, uh, oftentimes in countries like Australia that bars a foreigner or non-resident from buying existing properties, you're forced to buy units and apartments in a city area. Or, and oftentimes even foreign properties that are marketed in Singapore, they are, you are given a choice of apartments and not houses because they're not building houses anymore. And if they build new houses, it's often very far away. Now, do the locals like apartments and do apartments appreciate faster than houses? And that is the big question because let's look at the proof here. A house in St. Kilda, same postcode today, the median price is 1.39 million and it takes 55 days to sell with an auction clearance uh, rate of 68%. And the median price today is 1.39 million. Now look at uh, 2017. Four years ago, it was 1.24 million. So you can see there was a slight increase of houses in most house prices. And most years, it is close to double digit return. Although 2019, you had a big dip, but it rose back again. Uh, I would say the appreciation is close to about 5% to 6%. Now let's look at an apartment or unit. Median price $645,000. It takes slightly longer to clear, 90 days. In fact, it is about close to 80% longer to sell. Okay, As all you, you know, days on the market is a very good indication of demand. Now, the auction clearance rate is also 69%, which is the same. But look at the price. In 2017, an apartment was sold for median price of 645000 And this year, it is still $645,000. So we are looking at units and houses. In the same area, a house appreciates faster than a unit. And this is near the city center. So you probably can't buy a new house. And if you want to buy a new house, it's far away again. And if you buy an apartment, even if you buy an old one, the price is still the same. So you have two issues here. Overpaying, okay, and buying the wrong asset class. Now, it does not mean that all new builds are bad. It depends because if you want a sure thing and you want a home to live in and you want something new, sometimes... A new home is useful because you just sign on the dotted line, the contract is done, two, three years later you got something new 
and you don't care so much about investment returns, then new builds are good for you. Okay, but if you care about investment returns, perhaps you should be looking at the best areas and try to buy older apartments or older houses and whatever there's in demand and with very little supply at that place. So signing out, this is Jeff Ong for today's YouTube session. Hope you to see you at the webinar soon. Thank you.